Hey guys, I got an update for you for uh, the ejection of Emmanuel Forbes. I talked about it during the halftime stream and the post stream, uh, but uh, PFWA pool reporter Nikki, I apologize, I'm not going to pronounce your last name because I don't want to butcher it, uh, but they're a reporter for the Washington Post. Um, and so here we go. Uh, they were interviewing NFL senior vice president of officiating Walt Anderson uh, to yesterday. So it must have been just after the game. Uh, so they were basically talking about why this player was ejected. Was this really a necessary roughness? Um, was it clearly a, a helmet to helmet hit? Uh, and Anderson confirmed, if I pull this up, let's bring it up for you. Can, can, yeah, if you, if you blow this up on your, on your screen, it, it should be re uh, legible for you. But, uh, if you cannot read, I'm going to read it for you, AKA if, if you, you know, are blind or something like that. So here we go. Uh, question. On the Emmanuel Forbes unnecessary roughness penalty, was that called clearly for the helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit? Anderson responds, Yes, the foul on the field was for forcible contact on a defenseless player, which was the receiver. Okay, that makes sense. Question, okay, and what determined the ejection? I know they said at the game here that upon further review, they decided it was grounds for ejection. And th this is the big question, right? Like, you know, players get hit all the time, especially in the head. What made this one different? And so Anderson responds, right, yes. So rule 19 allows New York whenever a flag is thrown for unnecessary roughness on the field. So rule 19, whenever a, a flag is thrown for unnecessary roughness on the field, it allows New York to take us to take a further look whenever, let me start again, I apologize. Right, yes, rule 19 allows New York, comma, whenever a flag is thrown for unnecessary roughness on the field, it allows us to take a further look. What we're looking to try to avoid is helmet to helmet contact and this is what i talked about um yesterday in the post is um they're they're not trying to they're, they're trying to make an example right this this is a specific type of collision that they don't they don't want um, and he continues it was certainly not a bang bang type play where you have both the defender and the receiver just playing for the ball we want players to stay away from helmet to helmet contact. We're also looking at is the defender making the attempt to play the ball or is he making no attempt to separate the ball from the player in terms of going straight for the head. And is uh and in this case it was the latter where he just went straight for the head and that's why it rose to the level of disqualification. And uh, so you might say, well, it was a bang bang play. And so in this case, Anderson is saying that New York um, appears to um, define a bang bang play as when both players are going straight for the ball. And so since Anderson was not going for the ball the ball had already been secured and he was not going to make an attempt to punch the ball out or strip it he was going to hit the player and not tackle the player or something he was going specifically to hit the player the type of collision he made was unnecessary roughness and because the unnecessary roughness he made specifically was a head-to-head -head collision that is what they determined was disqualification. Does that make sense? So they defined bang bang as both players are going specifically to the ball. 
So if the DB and the receiver are both trying to catch the ball, or as he's trying to catch the ball, the DB hits him, that's a bang-bang play. The ball is still in the air. If the receiver or if anybody already has the ball and then you hit him in a specific way that is out of the targeting box, that's unnecessary roughness. So if you hit him below the knee, unnecessary roughness. If you hit him like in the neck, unnecessary roughness. If you hit him in the head with your arm, unnecessary roughness. But if it's a helmet to helmet, then that comes to the idea of, well, rule 19, we have the option of disqualifying him. And because y- you see, because it's a concussion issue for both players and such a dangerous, uh, you know, way that that can go, they determined that they wanted to disqualify the player to remind everybody, in, in my opinion, that that this this is the type of unnecessary roughness that reaches as he says rose to the level of disqualification all right i hope that makes sense let's continue with um the final question question got it and just to clarify you said that it was done after the assistance of new york correct correct so don't be mad at the refs on the field This was a purely New York decision. And as Anderson, the vice president of officiating, said, it is Rule 19. Rule 19 gets to determine whenever a flag is thrown for necessary roughness on the field if they can determine disqualification is in order. And we see unnecessary roughness all the time. And so I, I, I went into this yesterday, and um, I'm just going to cover it really quick. If a Seahawk fan or anyone else is calling um, Forbes a dirty player, I think that's incorrect, and that's not fair. We have no evidence that he was targeting. And it was, as, as we define as fans... A bang bang play. He Lockett was covering, going into the fetal position as he's known to do. He seems to get hit in the head all the time. Maybe he should look at that. I don't know. Players get what swatted and hit in the head all the time. The reason that this player got disqualified is because of Antonio Brown getting kneed so hard in the head by Vontaze Perfect. That he never really was the same. And so the reason that plays like this and unnecessary roughness calls like this have the disqualification option available is because it's a reminder to players because this is going to get shown in every single you know, room this week, every single locker room, is to remind players keep your head out of the game period you'll get unnecessary roughness calls for clipping in the knees and in in, right but keep your head out of the game (laughs) you know because because a the nfl doesn't want to get sued for concussions down the road so they have to kind of do this but b we want to make sure that these young men playing this very dangerous game can have healthy lives moving forward and that they don't have tumultuous, you know, emotional traumatic brain damage. And, you know, hopefully Tyler Lockett's going to be okay. And hopefully Forbes is going to be okay. Cause you know, whiplash from just fucking headbutting a player into the ground. Um, and also, I hope he's not fined because he got disqualified. And if he is fined, I hope it's minimal because that's a whole nother conversation. But players being fined aggressively. he The example was already made. He got disqualified. He was not allowed to play. You know, 
you don't need to find him to also make an example out of him. There's a, like I don't. Hopefully, he doesn't get a massive fine on top of it to equal an extra example. Players go through enough. It was a natural part of the way that the game plays, and they want to, by disqualification, teach you, hey, protect your head and then the the heads of your peers. Because at the end of the day, everyone wants to go home and hug their loved ones. So, um, anyways, that's all I have. Um, hopefully, Tyler Lockett, uh, apparently he passed concussion protocol. I've never seen a player get hit in the head so much and seem to always pass concussion protocol. Um, and hopefully Forbes is doing okay. Um, don't, don't at this player and call him dirty. He's, he's just playing a game, and sometimes shit happens. Let's make sure that, you know, that we give him grace. Um, and um, y'all have a good day.